Hi, my name is Beth Bandy. I'm principal of Beth Bandy Research and Consulting. Today I'm going to show you how to use a tool called Chi Cha Cha, which is a Chinese language website where you can go and look up information about companies that are based in China. The data from this or used on this website comes from a government website in China called the National Enterprise Credit Information Publicity System. That website is really interesting. It is uh, quite thorough and you can find a lot of information there. I like using this website, however, because it, even though it draws on the same material, it presents the information in a more usable way. And it's, it gives you nice snapshots of company backgrounds and you can see uh, network graphs to see how executives are connected to various companies in just a very clear way. This is a primarily free website. Uh, there are some services on here that require you to subscribe if you want to get all of the details you might need. I should be clear from the beginning that I am not in any way um, paid to or affiliated, uh, paid to promote this website or affiliated with it in any way. I just find it's very helpful when I'm doing my research on uh, companies in China and I'm sure other people would find it useful too. One of the challenges that we have here in the United States um, for many people who are doing research, corporate research, and are faced with researching companies in China is that you, know, you may or may not read Chinese. And uh, so in that context, it may seem like there's not a lot of information to be found about companies based in China. In reality, though, there's a lot of information that you can find. And uh, sites like this one can be really helpful in tracking down the information you need when you're doing corporate research. What you have to do though is, if, if you can't read Chinese, is install a translation tool. So what I have, if you look up here in the upper right hand corner of my screen, I have this button here. Uh, it's Google Translate and it's just an extension for my browser. I, and I'm using the Chrome browser, you can use Firefox or any other browser that also has um, translation tools available as uh, browser extensions. I find the Google Translate extension to be really helpful and I think that Google's translation tools are just, they put a lot more money and, and time and resources into developing their translation tools compared to other companies. So the quality of their translations and the range of languages they cover is quite a bit more extensive than other companies at this point. So what you do to get this tool, if you don't have it already on your website, is you go to the Chrome store or the whatever the extension store in quotes is for the browser that you have. And this thing is just, it's free. It doesn't cost anything to download it. So if you just go Google, um, Google Translate browser extension, you can find the link to download this onto your site. Once it's downloaded, it will appear on your screen like this on your browser. And what this allows you to do is instead of just translating a couple of words at a time, it lets you translate the entire page you're looking at. So you can sort of surf through web pages more quickly this way. If you're not able to read Chinese or whatever the language is what you're, that you're working in, you can use this button to help you navigate more quickly than you would by just sort of copying and pasting a few words at a time into a tr another translation tool. So once you have the button installed on your browser, you just click on it and it will ask you if you wanted to just translate one word, you could pop it right into that search bar and hit the translate button. But in this case, we want to translate the whole page. So I'm going to click translate the page and you'll see in the upper left corner it was saying it was translating and now it has been translated. If for some reason you want to go back and see the original, uh, then you can do that by clicking show the original. In this case, we just want to look at what the search options are on this page. And so under check the company, look up on the company, uh, you can see a series of search buttons down here. You select the type of search you want to do. And in this case, I'm going to search for a company. So I will uh, search business name. But you could also search for the legal representative of a company or a shareholder. You could search for an executive. 
the brand, a brand or product that is produced by a particular company. If you don't know what the, the parent company is, but you know what the brand is, you could use that. It could be helpful. Um, the same thing down here, you can search by address or by telephone. Now, you need to know a couple of things. One is that all of these searches have to happen in Chinese. I mean, the telephone, you can just do numbers, but the address will need to be in Chinese and will need to be in the correct address format for uh, addresses in China. So if you're unclear what that might be, uh, you can go, Wikipedia has a guide to address formats. If you just search Wikipedia for address format in China, you can find a resource that shows you how the address elements are ordered and you'll find that it's different than what we use here in the United States. So if you want to be successful in doing this kind of search, you need to have your, the different parts of the address, the street and the house number and the, the all of the other elements that you think of as being part of an address, you need to organize them in the right way in order to get this search to work. So in this case, we're going to look up a business name. So I'm going to click on business name. And I'm also, I just want to point out that I have translated this page from English, so, or from Chinese into English. And so it looks like you could just search in English, but you can't. You have to have the Chinese characters for whatever it is you're searching, the address, the person, the business name. In another video, I will talk about some strategies for figuring out what uh, those characters might be if you don't already have them. For our purposes in this video, let's just assume you have the characters and search by uh, those. So what we're looking for here is a company called Alibaba, and I had that company's characters already. If any of you are familiar with uh, Chinese business news uh, articles, you follow the Chinese news at, at all, uh, you'll know Alibaba. It's a huge company. It's been around for a while. And there are lots of different divisions. We're going to look at the big one here at Alibaba, China Network Technology Company. So I'm just going to click on that name. And you will see that there is a uh, a lot of information here again, it's in Chinese, so I'm going back up to my little browser button and I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to click translate this page. And as that happens, the information that's on this page will become more clear. So here's the translated page. Uh, you can see basic information at the top of the page about the company, the main phone number for uh, contacting their, you know, their main switchboard, a contact email for someone who is a representative of the company or sort of just a, uh, the main desk kind of contact information. You can get a little bit of an overview of the company, the history of how it was started and some major landmarks along the way. As you scroll down this page, you can see some more information. Um, there is information you can scan a QR code on your phone and download the information that's shown here if you want to do that. Uh, you can see some information about announcements for the company. Uh, you can, if there are things like legal actions that are coming up, you can click on the links under that and find what might be happening. Now, as I mentioned, Alibaba is a huge company. So when you, the things we're looking at here, there's a, a level of detail and a tremendous number of links that you probably won't find with many of the companies that you're looking at because you won't be, this is just such an enormous company. There's a lot of thing, the material to go through. But in general, you won't find that much. One of the things you can see under, as you scroll down to some basic business information, you can see information about the top executive for the company. If you click on that person's record, you will see some more information about this individual. Um, in this case, it, it's already, this time it just automatically translated itself, but if it didn't, you could, it would be in Chinese and you go back and hit that translation button again. Um, you can click on map, which is really interesting. Uh, this will show you uh, in Chinese, obviously, again, uh, the characters in the middle here. This is the name of the person you were just looking at. And these are all of his affiliations with different companies. Now, and we, you can spend some time drilling down into these. A lot of these are affiliated with Alibaba or maybe with other companies he serves as on, uh, if he serves on boards of other companies, those would show up here as well. 
Um, and so it's just good to know that this exists. One thing you should know is if you can't tell, if you don't read Chinese and you can't tell what these characters mean, you can do this little trick. So you right click uh, with your mouse, you right click on the name of a company and then this menu pops up and what you do is you scroll down to the bottom and it says inspect. What this is going to let you do is look at the coding like, behind this website and when you hit inspect a little window will pop up on the right side. The name of the company you had highlighted will be right here and it will also be highlighted in blue on this little side window that popped up. And if you look in there, right in here are the characters for the company name that's listed over here that you had highlighted. And what you can do there is you can copy those characters. You can control C, copy them, and go paste them into another translation tool or go Google them and see what company that is to do some further research. So even the in this type of map, the way it's set up, uh, Google Translate and other translation tools that are sort of those automated extensions we've been talking about, they won't work right off the bat. You have to go this sort of extra step and, and look at the coding. And in, you know, sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. You're sort of um, at the, at the uh, mercy of whoever coded the website. But in this case, this uh, website is very good about including the characters for all these different names that you'll see in network maps like this one. Uh, you can use this inspect element tool to look up the original characters. And then you can use those to you know, plug them into other translation tools and Google them to see what they actually are talking about. So it's good to know that there are, that this map exists. I'm just going to show you that you, each of these company names that are on here, these are all links. So if you click on the uh, name of one of these companies, it will take you to a separate profile for that company and you can learn all about it. So I'm just going to click out of here. And you want to show you one more thing on here, which is that a lot of there's a lot more information about this individual who's this executive with Alibaba. In this case, this is blocked off by subscription, and this is you know fifty or sixty dollars a year U.S. It's not ridiculously expensive if you do a lot of Chinese research, but on the other hand, you can't access this information through this website without getting a subscription. So you need to kind of be the judge of what is most worthwhile for you. But let's go back to look at some more of the free material about Alibaba, the company. So we were here, we had looked at the executive's name, and now we want to look at the company. You know, we looked at a network map for this executive, but there's also a network map for the company itself which will look very familiar, but instead of having the executive's name in the center, what you're going to have is the company name with, oh, yeah. <laughs> so this one, because it's such an enormous company and there are so many connections with various business units and other companies and many, many investors from lots of different places, this is an incredibly complicated network map. Usually what you'll see is more like one company in the middle of the map with a few units or subsidiaries around it. So this is a little overwhelming, but you can, it sort of gives you the scope of material that they have in this website. So if you click on any of these links, you click on any of these buttons, these are all companies and you can drill down to see what additional information is there. I'm going to go back up here and go look at the page we were just on. And the page, Let's see if it translates itself automatically. Yep, there it goes. So there are a couple things here. You can see who the shareholders are. If you, so we've looked at the executive. We've looked at the company association map. And now we're going to click on shareholder structure. In this way, this is a pretty basic one. It gives you a little bit of information. There's one company that 100% owns the one the company we're looking at right now. But sometimes there'll be more detail here. You might have several different investors that are owning different chunks of a company. And um, they give you some information here about what the, how much this is worth. And so if you want to, you can, again, you can inspect the element. You right click on anything you don't, you can't translate yourself. And you inspect, click inspect, a little window pops up. 
you hopefully find right here, we find the characters for some words we may not recognize, and then we can you translate those by themselves or plug them into a search engine to find some more information. So back to this main page about Alibaba, it gives you information about the registered capital for the company. Uh, it has, when it says subsisting here, this is under business status, that really, that's a translation issue, I think. It just means this, this is a company that is active. It, if it had been dissolved or had otherwise closed, it would say something to that effect there. But in this case, subsisting just means this is a company that is currently in operation. Um, it tells you just to the right of that that the company was established in 1999. You can find its taxpayer identification number if that's important for the research you're doing. Um, interesting, as you go over here on the left-hand side of the column again, you can see this is the type of company. It says it's a limited liability company, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macau, legal person owned. Um, so what that means is that this company is in some way registered in Hong Kong, probably. It may also be in Taiwan or Macau. But a good first bet is often to look in Hong Kong. Uh, and there are there's a corporate registry, which I will cover in another video in the future, that w you can use to look up information about shareholders and directors and, and company information for businesses that are located in Hong Kong. But for now, just know that, that when it says that, limited liability company with these three places afterwards, it's probably Hong Kong. And you might want to go take a look. Um, gives you more information here. It's registered in mainland China in Hangzhou, in the high-tech zone, so you can sort of get a sense of where the company is located if you don't really know that already. Um, you can see how many people they have on staff. In this case, they have lots and lots. Um, you can get the company address, the main address, and what that also has next to it is a map. So you can see where the company is located uh, just by clicking this button gives you the address, which sort of automatically translated there. And in the background, will the map will pop up in a second. And so this can be helpful if, for instance, you, a lot of times when Chinese company names are translated into English, we may have records in our databases, in our companies, or in our schools, universities, whatever institution we work for, um, that where the company really doesn't, the name is not clear or it, there may be multiple companies with similar names. What you can do with this map, which is obviously not coming up here for some reason, um, is you can, you can look to see if this is actually in the right place. So if you think the company is in Shanghai and the map shows you that it's really in, it's outside Beijing, then you probably have the wrong company. So I guess in this case, you're just going to have to take my word for it that the map exists. It really does exist, and that usually would pop up there. But for some reason, for this particular company, it's not happening. All right, so let's go back here to our main page. Um, under company address, it shows you a business scope. So that gives you a little bit of detail about what kinds of work this company undertakes. And then as you continue scrolling down, you can see who the shareholders are. As we saw in that map earlier about shareholders, there's one company, Alibaba China Limited, that is that owns 100% of the company. Um, you can also see how much capital that company has contributed in a, in a particular time frame. So in this case, it was right back when the company started in 1999. Uh, this, this shareholding company gave and it says 59,690, but if you look up above, that's actually the unit is 10,000 yuan, so or, or renminbi, the currency in, in China. So you need to take this 59690 and multiply it by 10,000 to get the renminbi total, and then you need to do a currency conversion to make sure you get it back into US dollars to see what that actually is. So there's some more information there about investments. You can keep looking at that. Um, more information, the maps about statistical analysis of foreign investments. There's a lot of information on here about uh, whether or not, uh, if companies have foreign investors, you can see quite a bit of detail about that. And one thing I just want to point out is that look on this website for these little down arrows. You can download these charts and maps. So if you wanted to include these in a report, you can download them as uh, JPEGs and, and, and slap them into a, into a report pretty easily. 
And of course, these are in Chinese, so you might need to do a little editing so you can, you know, you're, if you have non-Chinese reading audience, you might need to make some edits so that people can see what's there, but this can be really helpful. And in this case, there are 66 different foreign investors. So this is obviously a huge company. There's a lot going on here, but there are, these are investing companies that are investing into Alibaba. And so you can click on each of the links on the left-hand corner at left-hand uh, column. And those will take you to other records about those companies. And again, you can see how much they have in capital and you know, other things. And again, subsisting means existing. So that goes on for a long way for, you know, to get through 66 different companies, uh, but we're just going to keep scrolling down here. The next section shows you main staff. So a lot of times these are your, your chairman, your general manager, like the, the fourth person listed here, uh, anyone who's sort of in a very senior executive role and perhaps some directors. And if you, each of these names are hot linked, so if you can click on them and go to the kind of individual profile we looked at earlier. And another thing you can do is um, see here that this person is associated with 35 other companies. So it will take you to that network map that shows all, what all those different companies are. Further down, you know, this company is huge, so it has a ton of different branches and different places around the country. You may or may not see this section for the comp on, on, when you're doing research on another company. And continuing down here, there's a thing called change log, which just gives you information about new developments in the company. And if there are reports or anything that you can read, they'll be linked here. Legal representatives have changed. And then as you get a little further down, um, they have some information, ultimate beneficiary and the holding company. In this case, this material is blocked off for subscribers only. It kind of depends on the company, I think. I've, I've used this before and seen some of the ultimate beneficiary data without having to have a subscription, but I think it just depends on which company you're looking at. So this is sort of a quick overview, it's about 25 minutes of, of information about what types of detail you can find about Chinese companies and the a website uh, Chi Cha Cha, which can help you look up businesses and collect all, it collects all this information in one place. This video is the first in a series I'm doing about researching companies in China. I have other materials about researching other international topics, and would, some of these are available for free. Some of them are on a, on a subscriber basis. You can learn more by going to my website, which is just my name, Beth Bandy, B-E-T-H-B-A-N-D-Y.com. And I, you can also find a contact form there if you have any questions. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.